If your wife said that she went grocery shopping, but there were no new groceries in the house, you probably wouldn't believe her story, so you might ask her, well, if you really went grocery shopping, then where are the groceries? Imagine if her response was, that question isn't an argument, you're just trying to manipulate me. You would instantly recognize this as a dishonest evasion from someone who knows that she's been caught. But when Christian apologists do this, well, that's just good apologetics. Cameron Bertuzzi of Capturing Christianity has a handful of catchphrases, one of which is, questions are not arguments. Questions are not arguments. And this is something I point out on my YouTube channel a lot. In fact, Cameron likes this catchphrase so much that he made a video explaining it several years ago, and he recently said that it is by far one of his most important shorter videos. So what does he mean when he says that questions are not arguments? What kinds of questions is he talking about? Well, the example he gives is the question, why does God allow so much suffering? Questions like these, he says, are not arguments. They are, in fact, nothing more than appeals to emotion designed to bypass reason and manipulate Christians. Asking the question, why does God allow so much suffering, is not an argument that God doesn't exist. People that use this technique, like their advertising counterparts, are playing on the fact that our feelings can bypass our reasoning. And so to avoid being manipulated like this, we need to be guided by the truth, not by our feelings. Emotional questions are kind of like advertising. They can really mess with our ability to think rationally. And the solution is to just resist manipulation. While it is technically true that questions like these are not themselves arguments, it's clear to most adults that questions like these are used to convey arguments. This is a simple, everyday conversational tool, and we can show how simple it is with a few examples. In the case of your wife, who claims to have gone grocery shopping, the question, if you really went grocery shopping, then where are the groceries? Or simply, how could a supposedly successful grocery trip yield no groceries? Is clearly intended to convey an argument like this. If you went grocery shopping, then we would have new groceries. We do not have new groceries, therefore, you did not go grocery shopping. Unless you had a child bride, your wife would understand that the question is just a succinct way of conveying this argument. She would not rebuke you by saying that questions are not arguments. She would understand what you mean. This is a normal, everyday conversational tool. As another example, imagine if you were talking to someone who believed that the Earth was flat. You might ask them something like, if the Earth really is flat, then why do ships sailing away from us disappear from the bottom up? While the question itself is not technically an argument, it is clearly intended to convey an argument like this. If the Earth is flat, then ships sailing away from us would disappear from our view all at once. Ships sailing away from us do not disappear from our view all at once. Therefore, the Earth is not flat. Unless the flat earther simply didn't hear what you said, he would understand that your question is just a succinct way of conveying this argument. He would not rebuke you by saying that questions are not arguments. This is a normal, everyday conversational tool, and you can expect even a flat earther to know what you mean. In the exact same way, if someone asks, why does God allow so much suffering, it is true that this question itself is not technically an argument, but it is clearly intended to convey an argument like this. If a God who is all-loving and all-powerful exists, then the world would have very little suffering. The world does not have very little suffering, therefore, a God who is all-loving and all-powerful does not exist. These kinds of questions are just simple ways of pointing out tensions within a worldview and of conveying Modus Tollens' arguments. If A is true, then B should be true. However, B is not true, therefore, A is not true. Modus Tollens. To convey this argument through a question, you would say, if A is true, then why is B false? Or even simpler, how is A compatible with not B? If you went grocery shopping, then why don't we have new groceries? If the earth is flat, then why don't ships disappear from view all at once? 
And if the Christian God exists, then why doesn't the world contain very little suffering? While these questions are not themselves arguments, it's clear to any socially competent adult that these questions are conveying arguments. This is a normal, everyday conversational tool, one which I can all but guarantee Cameron himself uses when something around him isn't adding up, like when his wife returns from grocery shopping with no groceries. So basically, my response to Cameron's catchphrase, questions are not arguments, is just to say, come on man, you know what the other person means, quit being a smartass. Instead of responding to what these questions obviously mean, Cameron simply dismisses them as manipulation and declares that they are nothing but irrational appeals to emotion. Why? Because the arguments these questions convey make him feel uncomfortable. The arguments these questions convey make him... doubt. When someone asks us why God would allow something as terrible as the Holocaust, even though that's not necessarily a rational conclusion to jump to, it can still feel like God doesn't exist. So what does he do to quell his feelings of doubt? Simple. He kills the messenger. He attacks the basic tools of inquiry that are being used against him. He pretends that, because the questions are not themselves arguments, he doesn't have to listen to them. He abandons his basic conversational skills in order to protect his beliefs from criticism. As I've shown in this video, there is simply no way that a functioning adult like Cameron doesn't understand how questions can indeed convey arguments. This is a normal conversational tool that everyone uses. And incidentally, as I showed in a previous video, there is no way that Cameron doesn't understand how internal critiques work. This too is a normal conversational tool that everyone uses. And yet, when it comes time to apply these tools to Christianity, he seems incapable of understanding them. We say that you should never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. But honestly, I don't think Cameron is malicious or stupid. I think Cameron Bertuzzi, and apologists like him, simply become hyper-fixated on reducing their own feelings of doubt and cognitive dissonance, to the point where they will accept any answer that sounds good, and they simply do not notice if the answer undermines basic conversational tools, like Modus Tollens questions or internal critiques. It's not malice, it's not stupidity, it's compartmentalization. It is emotional damage control. Fundamentally, this is what Christian apologetics is all about. I'd like to say one more thing, just in case someone accuses me of ignoring a key argument that Cameron was trying to make. One other way Cameron tries to defend his catchphrase, questions are not arguments, is to lay out a valid argument, and then to replace one of the argument's premises with a question. If the first two premises are true, then the conclusion must be true, like of necessity. But notice what happens when we replace one of the premises in this argument with a question. Premise 4, if abortion kills a human, then it is wrong to perform abortions. Premise 5, does abortion kill a human? Conclusion, therefore it is wrong to perform abortions. Turning premise 5 into a question actually means that we no longer have a valid argument. The conclusion doesn't actually follow anymore. And this is because you can use questions to like get information, but you can't use questions to assert information. First off, it's flat out false that questions cannot assert information. Hey Cameron, why are you scared of furries? And how is it that a kind man like you could be molesting children? And will you ever stop beating your wife? Apu, will you ever stop selling spoiled meat? No. I mean, yes. I mean, uh-oh. And second, he's supposed to be responding to the idea that questions are arguments, not that questions are premises within arguments. He seems to have forgotten what his video is about after just 90 seconds of runtime. This entire exercise is... bizarre, and I honestly don't know what Cameron thinks he's responding to as he crams a question into a deductive argument. I can only assume that he's just trying to make questions look stupid and irrelevant with as little effort as possible.